The last thing we're going to do is basic job management. Um, this topic gets even more complex. If you take 2400, you actually write a shell, so you'll get into dealing with a lot of this. But normally we run a command like Emacs. It runs in the foreground. By that I mean it's what's currently being displayed on my shell. When I give it keystrokes, this is what I'm using, so on and so forth. You can actually do what's called running a command in the background. To accomplish that in the shell, you just type in the name of the command and you follow it with an ampersand. And this actually says take Emacs and go and run it, but don't actually occupy my shell. So Emacs is running right now, but I'm not looking at it. I can actually run other commands. Emacs is a good example for what I'm about to show you. Normally, you would never do this with Emacs because it doesn't make sense, right? Like, what's the point? Emacs is an interactive program. What's the point for me to put it in the background? This does come in handy, though. This will like a big benchmark, or this will like a big processing program that I'm just going to take an hour to run, and I don't need to sit there and watch it run. I can do something like this. It's going to go run in the background, and now I can just keep working on my shell without having to worry about it. This is running. It's running in the background, but I'm not. It's not occupying my shell. Um, if you want to see what's currently running, you can type in jobs. Jobs will tell you what's currently running. Right now, we only have one, and it's called Emacs. You can also see this by doing PS. PS lists all the processes. So uh, Emacs is also, I mean, the job is kind of the shell's view of a process. They're similar concepts, but if when, a, when a job starts, a job can be associated with more than one process, so on and so forth. But the basic gist is the shell is going to call this job, the computer, the operating system is going to call it process. You can see them on both of these. The question, though, is what if I want to bring that back into the foreground? So what if I actually want to go in and start using Emacs? Or what if I want to go in and look at the output of this program? There's a command called foreground, fg. And if you type in fg followed by the job name, or the job number, which should be that number over there on the left in square brackets, it's going to go ahead and bring you back into the foreground on this job. Uh, I exited it, so now if I do jobs, we should see nothing, so on and so forth. There's also a, so the other thing is sometimes you don't think to start a program in the background. Sometimes you start a program, and now you want to put it into the background. So the way you do that is, the first thing you have to do is what we call pausing the program. You do that by doing control Z, we'll do, we'll, we'll pause the program. So if we do control Z, and now we type in jobs, you'll see we have one program, Emacs, that's currently stopped. If we go to PS, we'll see Emacs is there. And if we go to foreground, we can bring it back up again. So Control Z will put something into the background um, while you're running it. It's actually a little bit of an oversimplification. When you do Control Z, what it actually does is it suspends the program. So with Emacs, this is the same thing. If we did something like So I'm going to run in command loop. You would actually have to run this command called background. So on Emacs, this isn't going to do anything. But um, if you do background followed by the job number, it'll then start it running in the background. So if you want to start a program in the background, you just do program name followed by ampersand. If a program is running and you want to put it into the background, you do control Z. That'll suspend the program. Then you need to do background program name, and that'll start it running again, but this time in the background. With Emacs, it's kind of the same because Emacs just automatically stops itself every time you try to start it in the background anyway because it's waiting for me to open it and actually do something. Um, I'll write it in a minute, loop. Maybe we've got some time here in a little bit and kind of show you the difference. But know what the BG, the foreground command does, the background command does, and know control Z uh, and be looking at the ampersand after it commands us. The other side of this too is, I mean, 
So where most people run into this initially isn't because they need to go spend a bunch of jobs in the background, it's because they were typing in Emacs and they accidentally hit Control Z instead of Control C, which are pretty close to each other on the keyboard. If you do that, your work isn't gone, you just suspended it. So to get it back, you use the foreground command, and you can go right back into Emacs. People come to me all the time freaking out because they somehow crashed Emacs and lost all their work and say Control Z and the screen disappeared. It's really just foreground followed by a number of the job, and you're good. Questions on foreground or background, what that deals with? Um, what does the uh, plus or minus mean? So that means the plus is next to the default. So if I ran foreground with no arguments, so let's try this a few times. So when I do jobs, You'll see I now have two versions of Emacs. The plus, let's do a third version of Emacs because it'll construct this even better. So now if I do jobs, so the plus is what we call the default job. If I just run foreground with no job number, it's always going to open up whatever the plus is next to. So in this case, that copy of Emacs. Um, so I'll suspend that. Let's do jobs again. The minus is essentially the next one. So if this stops being the default, that's what become the default next. It's like the one that will come after. Um, and then all the other jobs won't have anything next to them. So that's just, if you use any of the job related commands, uh, in particular foreground, there's some other ones I'll like tell you to stack as well, but the plus is just if you run with no arguments, you'll get the one that has the plus next to it. It normally corresponds to the most recent one that was just Anything else? All right, let's kill all of these. Uh, a way to get kill operating. How often do you use all of these? How often do I use, what do you mean? These commands in bash scripting. It depends what you're doing. I use bash scripting a lot. Uh, I use the foreground command every time I accidentally hit control C. Sometimes I'm running a big job, I actually use them for what they were designed to do, right? Which is like, I have a program that takes an hour to run, I want to get it started and then check in on the status periodically, so I need to keep switching it between the foreground and the background. Um, these commands come from a time when all you had was one terminal, right? Now you can do things like open up another tab in your terminal and do more work there while your program runs in one. So they've arguably become less necessary than they were at one time, but they're kind of still a core concept underlying what's going on here. So. You don't have to understand everything about them, but knowing they exist and kind of understanding the concepts comes in handy, especially if you decide you want to get into operating systems or stuff down the road where these concepts are really more core to what's going on. Cool. Um, so there's this command called kill. What kill does is it actually sends a signal to a process, so I can actually kill these jobs without actually having to reopen them again. Um, by default, Kill wants a process number, not a job number, because kill's not just limited to the shell, it's a full on program. So if I run PS, I can get the process IDs, I'm going to use them instead of the job IDs. There's a way to use job IDs, I'd have to look at the kill man page. It involves some syntax in front of the job number, but if I don't want to bother with that, I can just start typing in these numbers. So now if I run jobs, you'll see that that first one's gone. Let's do PS again. So I Kill one, I'm going to kill the next. Okay. So sometimes it kill actually it's called kill, but what kill does is it actually just sends a generic signal to a program. There's a handful of signals you can send. By default, kill sends, uh, oh, it's in control C, but it may not. Kill nine is the, that says send a signal that always means terminate this. So if kill by itself isn't working, you can use kill nine. You can read all about the details on the man page. So now if I do jobs, go down to one, and it's been good. All right, so. This. Questions on PS, jobs, etc. Okay. 